landing your first data science role in 2025 is going to be a challenge. Not only do you have more and more people applying to jobs, but you also have more responsibilities. A few years ago, you didn't have to know about prompting or large language models. Today, it is gonna be a required skill even for an entry-level data scientist. So what I wanted to do for you guys is build out a roadmap taking you from zero all the way to becoming a data scientist. Now, a little bit of a background behind me. First, I was a data analyst for about two years at a tax software company, and then I transitioned from being a data analyst to a data scientist at a fintech, where now I focus on both risk and underwriting. And transitioning from a data analyst to a data scientist was one of the inspirations behind starting this channel. I should also mention that this roadmap was made when, with collaboration with Matt. If you're familiar with the channel, Matt makes a lot of the AI videos here, and he also runs an agency called With AI. Out of college, he started as a machine learning engineer at Capital One and has a ton of experience behind them, as well as reading resumes and hiring people. So this is a roadmap between both of us. One last thing before we jump into this roadmap, the definition of what a data scientist is from company to company can vary quite a bit. At some companies, your data analyst is going to be called a data scientist. Other times your data scientist is going to be the data guy. Not only do you have to know a little bit of data engineering, you have to know data analytics as well as data science. Some companies where if you're a product data scientist, you're going to focus on EB testing as well as causal inference. And then lastly, some data scientists, all they do is work on models. So again, it can be quite different company to company. What I wanted to do is kind of have a general broad overview of a data scientist roadmap. But again, you can always tweak it for a specific role that you are trying to join. So step zero of this roadmap is to have the correct background ready to go to land a data scientist role. Now, I don't believe data science is an entry level job. In fact, you need to either have a degree or experience in a specific role to land a data scientist job. And also, I don't believe that you could just take a course online or watch some YouTube tutorials or even a boot camp and land a data scientist job. But that can be possible with data analytics. So if you do want to jump into the data field, I highly recommend you start with data analytics and I already have a roadmap on the channel ready to go if you want to start there. So uh, the background that you need for a data scientist, number one would be some sort of type of technical job. You could either be a data analyst, which focuses a lot on SQL plotting and working with data. You could also be a data engineer, which has a pretty good overlap already with databases as well as Python, or you could also be a software engineer. A lot of software engineers should be able to pick up Python pretty easily if they aren't coding with it already daily. On the other side of things, if you don't have a technical job like those three, you could also get a master's degree. And there's a ton of different master's degrees throughout the United States. Uh, some just focus on data science. Some of them also have statistics built in within the degree. So find a master's program that works with your scheduling. And also to mention, a lot of these master's programs are going to be closer to two years. So it does take quite a bit of time, but it is well worth it if you want to land a data scientist role. And the first required skill that I think every data scientist should know is going to be SQL. Now, why I think SQL is important is you should be able to pull your own data from a database and you should also act as a data analyst when needed. So you should know some more advanced SQL like window functions or subqueries and CTEs. You should also know how to create tables or views, fix broken SQL code, and then also at the same side of things, you should be able to create dashboards as needed. And I would focus on one software for that, whether it's like a Power BI or a Tableau. Personally, at my company, we use Looker and Mode, so I'm specialized in those, although it'd be pretty easy for me to transition into one of the other two. So after mastering SQL, the next thing you should take a look at is whether you want to start programming in Python or R. I highly recommend that you focus on Python over R. Look, R is more of kind of like academia focused, whereas Python has a ton of use cases within the business world. Plus also data engineers and software engineers use Python and it's often used in technical interviews. So highly, highly recommend that you use Python over R. But again, everyone has their own use cases, right? So what skills should you know, at least on the basic Python level? Well, we're going to jump into some of the different libraries in a second. But skill wise, you should at least know lists, dictionaries, tuples, if else, the for loop, and you should be pretty comfortable on how to install different libraries with PIP. So the most important Python library that you should master as a data scientist is going to be pandas. You can equate the pandas as a data scientist, whereas SQL would be with a data analyst. 
Instead of tables with SQL, you're going to have something that is called a data frame. Now, it is quite common to build out a data frame by importing in either CSV or Excel files. So that's probably the first skill that you should pick up. After that, you should learn the basics of inspecting a data frame. You could use like a head or a tail to take a look at a number of rows at a specific time. You should also know how to rename or create rows as needed. You should look at some aggregate functions and group buys. And lastly, you should be able to clean up data as needed. And put some easy ways to do that is taking a look at duplicates or null values. So up next, I would recommend learning the very basics of NumPy. Uh, NumPy will extend into linear algebra, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in this video, but you should be familiar with at least how to set up a random seed. So that way, when you are generating random data, you can reproduce the results. At the same side of things, NumPy does have aggregate functions that are built into it. You can find the sum, you can find the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, and it's also built around arrays. You don't need to be a linear algebra expert at this step of the roadmap, but again, you'll be using NumPy later on for more advanced math. One thing you're going to have to upskill if you're a data analyst currently is going to be your statistics knowledge. You could have the very basics of statistics and be okay as a data analyst, but as a scientist, you're expected to be well versed. Now, the very basic side of things, you should know your different type of summary statistics. You can think of like percentile, quantile, mean, median, mode. Then you should be able to be familiar with different types of distributions, whether it's a continuous or a discrete distribution. Right, you have like your normal Gaussian, uniform, Poisson, geometric. There's a ton of distributions. I have videos all about them on the channel. And lastly, you should be familiar with your different types of tests, uh, whether it's a Z test or a T test, chi squared. Um, what I recommend is you don't memorize every single specific test. There's so many of them out there, but be able to understand when you want to use a specific use case and whether your data is normal or not, because that will determine a lot of times what type of test you use. Okay, and the last thing that you need to know before we jump into machine learning is visualization. And there's a ton of different libraries out there to use. What I highly recommend is you start with two, and that would be matplotlib as well as Seaborn. I've used them a lot on different videos here on the channel, and those are my go-to at my job. Now it's time to take a look at machine learning. And what I would recommend, at least for beginners, is to start with supervised machine learning, specifically looking at regressions as well as classification type problems. There's a ton of machine learning algorithms out there, but if I'd pick four for a beginner, I'd start off with a linear regression because from high school and middle school, I always remembered Y equals MX plus B, and that's a pretty easy application of that. Then I would jump into a logistic regression. After that, I'd probably say K nearest neighbors as well as a random forest. The next library, I was kind of hesitant whether to put this in the roadmap or put this as like extra material at the very end, but I decided to put it here because I've used it on multiple projects at work. And honestly, you could learn it pretty quickly. And that is going to be Streamlit. Essentially, what Streamlit allows you to do is build out quick data apps and you can build out a UI within just a few lines of code. And you can also host these Streamlit applications on AWS. It's honestly pretty fantastic and it keeps on gaining popularity within the data community. I also have a few videos on my channel covering Streamlit throughout projects. So if you do want to pick it up, I'd recommend checking out those project videos. So this next skill is kind of a newer addition to a data science roadmap, but it is going to be understanding how large language models work. Uh, there's a ton of different use cases for large language models at companies, and it seems like the data scientist role uh, has to utilize this in some capacity. So what you should start off with is understanding how prompting works and you can even practice prompting with chat gpt there's a ton of different prompting techniques out there and we've made a handful of videos here on the channel demonstrating those so i'd highly recommend you check that out uh, next after that understanding how langchain works again we have a few videos on langchain and then lastly explore a few different large language models now large language models are always being developed and new ones are coming out quite often and there's an extensive list out there uh, but I would recommend starting off with whatever the newest version uh, OpenAI has released. Right now it's GPT-40. Then you have versions of Llama, the Claude, as well as Gemini that are quite popular. The last math skill on this entry-level data science roadmap is going to be linear algebra. And this involves matrices and solving equations. Now, if you haven't used a matrix before in either like high school or college, it can seem quite confusing how you're putting data into these and you know, finding solutions and working with eigenvalues or eigenvectors, um, but give it a little bit of time and it, it will eventually click. Uh, what I also recommend is you probably practice a few times 
uh, calculating things by hand, and then jump into Python where you can start automating uh, calculations. The last skill that you should learn in this roadmap is gonna be deep learning. And you can either go with TensorFlow or PyTorch for this. Although if you do wanna learn PyTorch, we do have a few videos here on the channel and we'll be building out more in the future. Um, but at least for an entry level job, you should be able to know how to tune a model properly. So I wanna end off the video with two points. One, another honorable mention skill that I think is worth mentioning, but I wouldn't invest a ton of time into it is model deployment. Most companies will have a dedicated data engineer that will help you out with it. But at the same time, it's not too bad to put this on the resume and it still is a great skill to learn. Uh, the second is to reiterate, data science, it's a very tough field to get into. You have a ton of competition and there's a ton of skills that you have to learn to be able to land even an entry level job, right? You have to put in dedication to get a data scientist job. It's not easy. And if you wanna study, right? We have a ton of videos here on the channel and we also have a super active Discord. So feel free to ask us questions. There's a ton of members in there. I think we have about 300 right now and we're trying to grow that community. Anyways, hope you guys found a ton of value from this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hope to see you guys in another video.